Greetings, YouTube. Today we're reviewing a Mutant Epoch module, The Flesh Weavers. Um, Adventure TM E-346 to 8 2nd to 4th rank characters, created by William McOsland from Outlands, Outla Outland Systems. Um, I would like to system, rather, I would like to thank Will for sending me a review copy. Um, now, again, this is a module, so I don't want to give out too much information. But you can tell from the cover that it's got something to do with flesh weaving. And you can also tell from the cover there's some kind of hulking tentacled monster here in the foreground that the characters are being all shocked at and staring. Um, and, I, I, and I think I can get the gist of it to you by just saying this is an old-fashioned bug hunt in the best possible uh, way that that statement can be taken. Um, the adventure begins with the characters in Pitford, the uh, kind of the default setting in the uh, Newton Epoch world. It's where the, it's their most fleshed out location. It's a walled city near a major ruin where lots of um, excavators go into looking for treasure um, and adventure and things like that. So it's the one place that they all come through on their way to and from the ruins. Many of them stay here, some stay on and become citizens of Pitford itself. Um, I've done a review of Pitford before. Um, and they're all stuck inside the walled city because there is a major sandstorm, one of the worst that the town has ever seen. So everybody is stuck inside the, inside the city. No one can go out, no one can come in. Um, people are starting to get stir crazy food and water is running low. Um, I would just have food be running low. I think that water should be taken care of within the city itself. I've talked about what I think is the absurdity of shipping water somewhere. You can't have a colony that way, but that's just me. Um, but it's in, in essence, things are getting tight. Prices are rising. The characters aren't earning any money. They're paying rent on the room they're in. Um, and they need to make some coin some way. And then we get into the adventure itself. Now, one of the things I was kind of surprised at is this thing, it starts, boom, you're in there. Okay? And I think there's a missed opportunity for building up the story a little more slowly. For example, run up a week or two prior to the events of the adventure. Really hammer home to the players that they're stuck in this city it started out just at the beginning of the, of the windstorm season, and then it's, it's been running for a solid week, okay? So, the claustrophobia, the, the ragged nerves, people are starting to get on each other, friendships are starting to get stressed, and people that aren't too friendly are already starting to get violent. I think you have an opportunity to build it up slowly. I also think that the actual introduction of the Flesh Weaver storyline could be done a little more gradually. Now, why do I say this? The initial scene where the characters are thrust into the adventure is very well written. Kudos to Will. The problem is, you as a GM have to verbally explain this to the characters. And the opening scene is very cinematic. Now, there's a nice illustration here, and the illustrations in this are, are, are good throughout, um, that you could use as a boom, you know, and just show the characters but I think the problem is to, to work up to that moment is can sometimes be difficult you have to be a somewhat talented storyteller to get the emotional frame of reference so that that impact can hit you I'm gonna give you an example of why I think this is I'm sure that since you're on the internet you know what a vine is it's a six second video now some of these things are works of art see some of these people really know what they're doing with these vines okay but if I were to verbally describe to you a six second video, it could take me two or more minutes to describe six seconds. That's the problem with our chosen hobby. The, the process of describing a scene while painting a vivid picture in the minds of the players is not the same as that cinematic pow of, the, of low lights or flashing lights, of dimly lit rooms, of sparks, of... of, of fast edits of angles coming from different places. The cinematography can tell a story without words. The best possible example I can think of in recent history is Fury Road. 
one of the best examples of showing, not telling. This is a medium where we have to tell. So I think if this, the, the, the adventure was kind of little, introduced a little more slowly, maybe a bit of a more of a Lovecraft, Love, Lovecraftian slow burn, and then hit them with that scene and that illustration, I think it would have had a little more impact. But that's just me. And as a GM, you can do that on your own. That's up to you. The adventure is solid. Um, there's there's uh, NPCs here to interact with. There are pre generated characters in the back in case someone doesn't have one or someone's character dies you can whip one of these out of the book and use it um, the uh, as I said the illustrations are good throughout there's an additional area that the characters can explore of course the characters would honestly know this the GM can just use it or not use it if they chose um, and that could actually be, be perchance even saved for a, an adventure somewhere else down the line if you don't want to use it immediately there are lots of floor plans and maps in this book, and to my mind, they are one of the best things in here. The other thing that's really great are all the random charts, random tables of random encounters, but most of all, random treasure. The random treasure in this is incredibly useful. How many times have we as a GM found ourselves in a situation where you're like, oh, you're searching the guy I didn't think you were gonna, because I didn't think he was gonna die. Well roll. Hey, this is your found. That can save your bacon. And there are excellent charts in this game. And even if you don't use the specific item that you roll, it could at least get you thinking in a, in a direction that you're not stuck in. Because sometimes we get stuck. You know, we were human. But I think, while I love those charts, those tables and things, the random encounters and the random treasure, the maps are, to my mind, the real value of this for replayability. Yes, you can use all the tables over again. You can use the NPCs over again. You can use the player characters as NPCs in the future in case the, people, the players don't use them. Just file off the serial numbers, change a gender, swap out a mutation here and there, change a background or an ethnicity, and you're good to go. The characters and players are never going to notice. The maps, though, the floor plans in this are excellent because the floor plans of a multi-layered building. But in a future time, you're, the GM could say, I just need a, the inside of a, a building. I'll just use this floor here. Rotate it 180 degrees, and I can guarantee you no player is ever going to notice that they've run that, 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 that map before. None of them. Particularly if you describe the roof, because you describe it as a single-level building, they're thinking single-level building. They're not thinking, my GM has stolen a, a floor from a multi-level building and is reusing it. Players don't actually tend to, tend to do that. They believe what you tell them. And if you can reuse a resource and something like this, do it. You save yourself effort. You can worry about storylines and interesting and non-player characters and interactions within the group, which are the important things in role-playing games, and you're not having to worry about having to draw up yet another frigging map or come up with another bloody treasure chart. That's one of the strong points of Will's products. Another thing is... He has a, a he, he presents the adventure and he says, "Read this to your characters." Now, if a good GM has read all the way through the module word for word, and you should. You don't actually have to read these things, but a GM who has less experience, this is really a wonderful guide. And this particular adventure is, in many ways, is less dark than some of the previous things that that Outland System has put out for the Mutant Epoch uh, game, because some of those ones. <laughs> The Ball of Doom, that's a dark friggin' venture. Okay, this is not quite that dark, which is excellent. Um, and it, it just, they, they, they kind of guide an inexperienced GM along. And in fact, I have recommended Will's modules to people who don't even play the genre of post apocalyptic stuff because he is so good at guiding a, a, a nation GM a newbie GM through the process of how to run an adventure. I really think he does a top-notch job. Um, and because of the fact that there are so many really wonderful descriptions in here for the things the GM is supposed to be reading to their players, I think this has a lot of playability in other systems. If you're using the Mutant Future, or you're running Gamma World 4th Edition, the 1992 edition, my favorite, or even if you're running Rifts, I think that this has playability in any of those, or uh, 
Apocalypse uh, Incorporated or something it is. I can't remember. Um, uh, Mutant Year Zero, Year One. You could use 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 some of this in there quite easily. Though you can obviously have to tweak the stats here and there. But again, any competent machine can do that without probably even breaking a sweat. Could even do it on the fly if you're good. Especially if you're running a system like the Mutant Future, which is a very simple system as far as stat blocks are concerned. Um, so I think that there's a whole lot of value in this product. Um, it's an excellent book. I have not been disappointed, disappointed with anything that Will's done. So that's, he's got a winning streak. He's batting a thousand if you want to use a sports metaphor. metaphor. Um, so if you are a fan of the Mutant Epoch, go get the Flesh Weavers. And if you want an example of a good module, um, especially for a newbie player, uh, a new, newbie GM, even if you're not using the game system, if you're not playing the genre, I would suggest this as a good example of how to run an adventure. Um, it, it really does uh, a lot of the heavy lifting for a GM who isn't uh, experienced in the hobby. So go forth, my fellow mutants. Get yourself a copy.